by being here today, you have just signed in to the upstate army that will be fighting this global pandemic of viruses, tick-borne diseases, mosquito-borne diseases. So thank you for joining us today. It is always a pleasure to welcome Chancellor Malatras. He literally every week challenges us to do more, but then he also supports us and promotes us vigorously. So thank you, Chancellor. I do want to introduce the leaders of the community who are here today and who are now part of our volunteer army. Deputy County Executive Ann Rooney, Mayor Ben Walsh, Christina Bertis from Congressman John Katko's office, Senator Sue Serino, Senator John Mannion, Senator Rachel, Rachel May, Assemblywoman Dee Dee Barrett. You, you must go look at her website. There's a big sign that says, get ticked off. Magnarelli, Maria Bibbs from Assemblywoman Pamela Hunter's office, Meg O'Connell, CEO of the Allen Foundation, Ann Messenger, Chair of the Board of the Lyme and Tickborne Disease Alliance, Rob Simpson, President of Center State CEO. Very happy to have Upstate Council members, James Sparks, the Council Chair, Gwen Mannion, Eric Allen, and our SUNY colleagues, Mira, Dr. Mira Sumput, the Vice Chancellor for Research, President Deborah Stanley, SUNY Oswego, President Casey Cribble, SUNY OCC, President Joni Mahoney, uh, SUNY ESF. Thank you, thank you all for being here. If there's one lesson that became apparent in 2020, it is that together we can do amazing things. Working with Quadrant and SUNY, Dr. Middleton created the world's best saliva test. His genius allowed pooled testing, which has kept our campuses open and our students safe. Dr. Thomas spent most of his time on TV, <laughs> so, giving easy to understand scientific advice in support of briefings by either the county executive or the mayor. Teasing aside, that was extremely helpful. But in his spare time, Dr. Thomas served as the lead worldwide investigator and helped us bring the Pfizer vaccine. Today, we pledge to take on Lyme's and other vector-borne diseases with the same ferocity. Our SUNY Level 3 Containment Lab is a giant step forward, the result of a collaborative grant among SUNY Oswego, OCC, ESF, and Upstate. This SUNY investment challenges us to replicate our success in confronting COVID. In fact, if we work together and support our brilliant scientists, I really would like to do that as well as we can. We can have some, the same remarkable impact on diseases that kill more people every year than COVID. Mosquito-borne malaria and dengue and a particular scourge in the northeast of the U.S. and certainly in th this area, tick-borne diseases such as Lyme's disease. We can, perhaps, must quickly create better tests, better treatment, vaccines. And with 2020 as our guide, and all of you now in our voluntary army, we know that we can do this. I'm confident that the army of scientists from SUNY, there are, it is a very nice symposium coming up this afternoon, working collaboratively in this lab right here in Upstate can deliver on these promises. So thank you again for joining us. And I'm delighted to welcome Chancellor Malatros. Good morning. It's great to be here at Upstate. I always love to be here at Upstate. Thanks first to Dr. Dewan. He is a phenomenal president. They have been doing tremendous things at Upstate. I've come to Upstate, I don't know how many times now, but I come because it's good news, it's important news, and it's innovative stuff that's happening here. So let's give Dr. Dewan a big round of applause.
I don't know how he's going to live down that shot at Dr. Thomas there, but we're going to talk about that later. I also want to thank our great SUNY presidents. What makes this project great is we are a collaboration here. It's not just upstate. We're joined by our other colleagues, uh, President Mahoney of ESF, President Craybill of Onondaga Community College, one of our great community colleges uh, in the state, it, as it, if not the nation, and President Deborah Stanley from SUNY Oswego. It's that kind of collaboration that makes it work, so let's give them a big round of applause. And this, this is not made possible um, unless we have the entire community behind us. And thanks to our congressional delegation, our state representatives, Senator Mannion, Senator May, Senator Serino, Assemblyman, Assembly Members Barrett and Magnarelli, as well as your great local officials, uh, Mayor Walsh, who is here today, County Executive McMahon. They've been here and they have given us unyielding support for Upstate, but all of SUNY. So let's give them a big round of applause too. And then um, uh, we also need to partner with the private sector. And we're joined today by Rob Simpson from Center State who has been instrumental in helping SUNY connect with industry, connect our students with industry and opportunities. That's really what this is about too. Let's give him a round of applause. Uh, today's um, opening is a perfect example of how ideas from SUNY colleagues and investment by the State University of New York and further support from SUNY Upstate will provide tremendous public good. That's what SUNY is all about, evidenced by our work uh, combating COVID. Uh, you have Dr. Stephen Thomas here who has already been introduced. He's taller than I thought, by the way. <laughs> Much taller and strong too, a very strong looking gentleman. But just think about it, at Upstate New York, SUNY Upstate, a SUNY school, a public institution, that's where we conducted the global Pfizer the principal investigator is right here at SUNY Upstate. Pfizer is producing vaccines, which is helping us turn the page on COVID. That is Dr. Thomas, Thomas right here. And Dr. Thomas, I'm with you. I think what President Dewan did to you was terrible. I never would have said such things to you publicly. You're great on TV, by the way. And you're great in the lab, and you're great in the clinical space. You're great everywhere. So don't let Dr. Dewan get in your head. Then Dr. Frank Middleton, I call him Saint Frank. I literally have a portrait of him on my wall in the office with an aura around him. Developing that COVID saliva test has literally helped keep our campuses open because the best place for instruction for our students has been in the classroom on campus. Thank God for Upstate, the world's number one saliva test. Think about that. Syracuse, New York, our researchers produced the world's number one saliva test. So St. Frank, he can't take a break, but still, we appreciate all he does. And if you look at, just one more thing about St. Frank, if you look at his photo on his ID, he's much younger looking, it's only two years old, but if you look at him now, a little different looking, a little, a little more rugged, a little older, but anyway, he's working hard. But we can't just stop with COVID. We have many other things that we have to work on, and Lyme disease is one of those issues. It's an immediate need, and in addition to Lyme disease, there are 15 additional tick-borne diseases in humans that are currently recognized by the CDC. These and other diseases will be studied right here and translated into solutions, not just researching it, translating it into solutions and cures. In essence, this lab today will translate ideas into action. Great facilities support and attract great scientists. SUNY Upstate has been developing the infrastructure for this research focus, and this unique laboratory will support comprehensive research on viruses and bacteria that require the highest levels of biocontaminant. The state-of-the-art BSL-3 lab, the only one left is BS4, BSL-4, I think, so we're right at three, is designed to specifically work with tick and mosquito-transmitted pathogens and other pathogens such as COVID-19. This lab will allow us to understand the biology and ecology of the disease transmission, develop new and more precise diagnostics, develop and test vaccines, and develop novel treatment options. This lab holds great hope for the scientists making discoveries, for the clinicians developing treatments, and for the patients seeking cures. Now I'd like to invite our great new president of SUNY ESF, Joni Mahoney, to the podium. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, thank you very much to Chancellor Malatris and President Dewan. Thank you for the invitation to join you here today. 
um, I continue what I think is just a long string of luck to be in a position uh, like the one I now have the honor of serving in at ESF with unbelievably smart and hardworking uh, colleagues, really led now by our chancellor who, if you know anything about Chancellor Malatris, and I think I, I met you, uh, it was more than 10 years ago now, he's one of the smartest people you'll know. He's a real policy expert and he is big on partnerships and this is a perfect example of the kinds of partnerships that we can bring as part of the SUNY system uh, with Upstate, with SUNY ESF, with SUNY Oswego and Onondaga Community College. Um, and I wanna give a, a shout out to my predecessor, um, Dr. David Amberg, who's sitting there. Dr. Amberg um, started a wonderful partnership with SUNY OCC that we're benefiting from now at ESF. And these are the kinds of partnerships that happen inside the SUNY system and how lucky for me to be part of this, but how lucky for this community to be the beneficiary of this kind of work that happens right here in Syracuse. And this is an issue that affects all of us. I said earlier that I grew up here and I didn't know anything about Lyme disease. We never had to worry about ticks when we were outdoors, but I certainly couldn't raise my children that way. You know, we all know, and there's people right here in this room who's, um, who have been affected or whose family members have been affected by the devastating effects of Lyme disease. All of these um, illnesses now can be studied and understood and cured here because of this lab that's being built today. And it's great to work on an issue that has such collaboration. I'm looking at my, my friend and colleague, Assemblyman Magnarelli, Assemblyman Didi Barrett, who's here, to have all levels of our state government really passionately committed to finding solutions that better the health um, of our community is just, a, it's wonderful. And I want to thank Senator May, the other members of our Senate delegation, our mayor, um, and one person that I worked a long time with who just loves when I call her out personally, the Deputy County Executive, Ann Rooney. So this is one issue in central New York that we are all together on. We have tremendous leadership from our Chancellor and President Dewan, and I'm just grateful to be um, able to uh, participate in this today. And I get to introduce the uh, world-renowned celebrity, the big, strong, <laughs> Dr. Stephen Thomas. <laughs> Good morning, I now know why I was invited to be here. Uh, Dr. Middleton is also, for the record, very tall and very strong and uh, is on TV a lot. Um, good morning, everyone. So, you know, I believe this past year has taught us all a lot, of, a lot of lessons, and, you know, there are two in particular that I often think about. So the first is that it's no longer a theoretical possibility that an emerging or re-emerging infectious disease could have the potential to cause widespread suffering and paralyze our society. The, the once in a century pandemic has occurred. The second is that when you have strong leadership, a well-defined mission, and adequate resources, we can all quickly understand these health threats and we can develop countermeasures against them. The SUNY system and its partners did just that. But as we begin to emerge from the COVID pandemic, we are compelled to refocus our efforts on the long-standing threats which are now nearing a tipping point for becoming the next major US epidemic. I'm speaking about tick and mosquito transmitted diseases such as Lyme disease, Powassan, West Nile encephalitis, anaplasmosis, and a host of others. Changing trends in population movement, our encroachment into underdeveloped areas, and changes in climate are driving interactions between humans, ticks and mosquitoes, and the pathogens they carry. We are already witnessing the outcome of this interface in central New York, with hundreds of cases of serious and complicated Lyme disease and Onondaga County, deaths due to anaplasmosis in Broome, and the frightening realization that new tick species and new viruses are already infiltrating our region. It is time, once again, for SUNY, SUNY Upstate, the CNY community, and our partners and collaborators to direct our attentions and get to work on finding ways to protect our region, our state, and our nation from tick and mosquito-borne diseases. Today, we are celebrating the opening of a facility which not only represents the necessary bricks and mortar and machinery required to take on this important mission, but also represents a literal and figurative space 
for teams of scientists, clinicians, epidemiologists, entomologists, preventive medicine, and a host of support personnel to meet, think, and conceptualize solutions to complex health problems. The new SUNY VBL is where the hard work will be done to protect our community. I am personally thankful to the SUNY system for its financial and administrative support of this project, SUNY Upstate leadership for its advocacy and perseverance towards making the VBL a reality, and especially to Dr. Saravan and Tangamani and the Global Health team for all they have done over these past years to collaborate in the planning and execution of a VBL vision which has now become a reality. It is my pleasure to now introduce Dr. Saravan and Tangamani, Professor of Microbiology and Immunology, a SUNY Empire Scholar, and the Director of the new SUNY Upstate Vector Biocontainment Laboratory. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much, Dr. Thomas. So good morning, everyone. So though all of our attention is focused on COVID pandemic, we cannot ignore other infectious diseases of human health concerns. If one thing that the current pandemic and past outbreaks, such as the Ebola outbreak in 2015, the Zika epidemic in 2016, and the chikungunya epidemics in 2016 taught us is that we can never predict when a virus will evolve and emerge to cause major outbreaks. So in our own backyard, tick and mosquito-borne diseases such as the Lyme disease, West Nile, and Powassan are on the rise, causing debilitating illness. It, from our own lab data that is actually displayed on the posters there, ticks carrying human pathogens are, are expanding into new counties and also in greater numbers. Biocontainment laboratories like the VBL, we call it short form for the Vector Biocontainment Lab, plays a crucial role to understand the biology of disease-causing agents, its mechanism of infection, transmission, and to develop novel countermeasures. This facility is a game changer. This will allow SUNY and upstate researchers and clinicians to be at the forefront investigating new disease-causing agents even before they emerge to cause the outbreaks. For example, through our citizen science program, we have identified a new tick-borne pathogen from the state of New York and also a new variant of Powassan virus. Now that the VBL is open and functional, we will be able to actually investigate this agent, these two agents and characterize them for its disease capacity. So that is something that we are really at the forefront to investigate before it actually becomes a problem. That can happen only because we have this facility. So that is the biggest advantage of that. One may ask, how safe is to work with these dangerous biosafety agents, or bio disease-causing agents? So we have redundant safety measures built in to protect the user and the environment. Some of the key features that I want to highlight here are, we have an extensive biosafety training program. Only those who pass the training program will be given access to work inside this facility. A redundant physical and mechanical barriers are built in and enforced as per CDC guidelines. We'll have a 24-7 monitoring access, even through remotely. We have trained building maintenance and engineering staff to help us if should we get into any trouble. Also, we have a great institutional biosafety team, including the biosafety committee, to help us. And of all dedicated operations staff with a lot of experience. So the combined biocontainment experience of myself and my lab members who are lined up here are 42 years. So before, so I want to kind of shout, give a shout out to Erin and Janvi who are here. They were helping me to operate a similar facility in my past institution that is considered as one of the largest arthropod containment facilities in the world. So they were ha I'm happy that they were able to come together with me here, in addition to my entire lab that I want to kind of give a shout out that they believed in myself and they actually traveled all the way from Galveston, Texas to here to work in this facility. And uh, so please stop by the posters and learn about the VBL and also the other research activities that will be conducted within this facility. So the VBL is made possible by the SUNY 2020 grant. And it's also the continued support of Dr. Dewan, Dr. Thomas, Mr. Eric Smith, the Upstate uh, Global Health Team, and also Dave Amberg. Also, I would like to take the opportunity to thank um, uh, Matt Blair, Marilyn Galemi, for their continued support in coordinating the construction of this facility and also being the liaison between myself and the construction team and the design team. Thank you very much for that. So with that, this is a pivotal moment for Upstate and SUNY to become the global leaders on investigation into disease-causing agents before they even become major 
outbreaks. VBL will provide the necessary infrastructure to collaborate on cutting edge research with overall objective of developing novel public health solutions to protect our community. So with that, I would like to introduce uh, Royal Scuderi, who is the Executive Director for the Central New York Lyme and Tick-Borne Disease Alliance. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, you've heard from doctors, scientists, administrators why this lab is so important. But I'd like to give you the perspective um, of why this lab is so important to our organization and to patients like myself. Um, first, let me tell you a little bit about the Central New York Lyme and Tick-Borne Disease Alliance. We are a collaborative of providers, uh, scientists, and community members who support research, drive education, and promote awareness to combat tick-borne diseases by focusing on four cross-functional pillars, clinical, education, environment, and research. Let me just say how thrilled we are to have this lab here, right here in Syracuse. That upstate was able to get a world-class talent like Dr. Thangamani to move his entire family and his lab team here to central New York is truly phenomenal. To also have leading infectious disease doctors like Dr. Thomas and Chris Paralino under the same upstate umbrella is a huge step in making strides against tick-borne disease. So kudos to Dr. Dewan and the leadership of Upstate and SUNY for not only their support of our fight against Lyme and tick-borne disease, but their willingness to be our partner in that fight. Here's why I think this is so important. This lab will bring state-of-the-art research and help make real, tangible strides in modern therapeutics for patients, patients like myself and countless others who have suffered so long and are looking for answers. We've come a long way since my story began 10 plus years ago. I am one of the many who did not see the tick, did not get a rash, and my presentation was more of a slow, steady worsening of symptoms over many months until I was severely ill with debilitating fatigue, nearly bedridden, and unable to work for several years. Dr. Paulina, who you can bet is on my speed dial now, <laughs> wasn't yet here. Um, there just weren't the doctors in the area who had significant Lyme disease experience. And so my journey included multiple doctors who failed to recognize and even test for Lyme, referrals to countless specialists, and numerous extensive and expensive tests before I finally st stumbled upon a doctor who was the first to ask the question, have you ever been tested for Lyme disease? Luckily, I, was test I tested positive and was, was given doxycycline, which was the standard of care at the time. But I did not recover as well as we had hoped, and we shortly discovered that I also had babesia or babiosis, which is another tick-borne disease which complicated the treatment, of course. Um, babesia was not commonly found in patients in this area at that time, and so there were also not doctors here who had experience treating that, necessitating trips to Long Island for a year of treatment until my acute symptoms resolved. This diagnosis and treatment journey took two years of my life, and then another two years rebuilding my health capacity until I was finally able to return to work again. Imagine a healthy, fit, active parent and successful professional who ends up bedridden, having to give up my career as a writer because I could not form complete sentences and ideas. Imagine ending up $60,000 in debt because of medical expenses and lost wages over the time that I couldn't work. And this, even with good insurance and a stable support system that many patients don't have. Now, many years later, I am functional with no acute symptoms. I look perfectly healthy and my blood work is pristine. And yet, I am still plagued by a constellation of chronic symptoms, pain, arthritis, fatigue, insomnia, and a loss of general health, endurance, and resilience that limits my life. In short, before tick-borne disease, I was extremely healthy, fit, resilient, rarely went to the doctor. After tick-borne disease, I now require double-digit doctor visits every year and a bunch of daily pills 
to manage the chronic symptoms that are left over from Lyme disease. I can't tell you how much anger, sadness, and frustration comes with that, not to mention the financial toll over these 11 years to my family. We have made some progress in the arena of tick-borne disease, some, but there's still a long way to go. And here's why I'm so hopeful. When someone is bitten by a tick now, we have this wonderful program to test the ticks for pathogens they carry, which gives us information. We have knowledgeable doctors like Chris Paulino and the team at Infectious Disease Associates who understand these diseases and offer the most effective treatment they can, which gives us better care. And now we have this research lab looking for that progress and those answers we desperately seek, which gives us hope. We have here at Upstate doctors and scientists who are dedicated to this progress, who are valuable partners in this fight, and we couldn't be more grateful to have them here in Syracuse. Thank you for having me. Even though we focus on pandemics and we are consumed by headlines, uh, it's stories like yours that really make the difference, that gets us to work every day to say it's the person that matters, each individual person. And so I'm really delighted to have all of you here for the support for the new facilities, the great expertise we have. Uh, I am very, very optimistic that Upstate, with SUNY's support and all of your support, will be the leader in preventing the next pandemic and treating each individual who does get affected by any one of these unpronounceable names. So I'm not even going to try. Um, but thank you all for coming. Thank you for your support. We are now going to do a symbolic ribbon cutting. And then there will be small group tours of the lab. So again, thank you all very much for coming. We really appreciate your support.